Welcome to lecture 16 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we will take a multi rate signal processing viewpoint of a multi carrier transceiver. So, before we create a multi carrier transceiver, uh, consisting of multi-rate components and such, which are all in discrete time, what we're going to do first is we're going to try and create a single carrier equivalent, and then from that we're going to essentially cut and paste to create a parallel realization that becomes a multi-carrier implementation. So it, this might not be the most efficient approach, but it will provide some perspective um, overall in terms of like how uh, data can be processed in order to create um, a multi-carrier waveform at the end of the day. So we can look at multi-carrier modulation as a simultaneous transmission of several low, date, uh, low data rate single carrier signals summed together. So as I mentioned before, multi-carrier essentially consists of a collection of narrowband uh, sub-carriers that are all added together and transmitted at the same time in parallel frequencies. So these narrowband signals, the terminology we're going to call them are sub-carriers and they are separate in the frequency domain, although they might be transmitted at the same time in the time domain. And so in this lecture, we're going to look at um, a type of modulation scheme in order to implement um, each one of these subcarriers. It's called orthogonal quadrature amplitude modulation, or OQAM. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're also going to use a combination of OQAM along with something called the discrete Fourier transform, or DFT, and IDFT, or inverse uh, discrete Fourier transform. Uh, and what these guys are going to do is it's going to take the baseband representation of each OQAM modulated signal and it's going to uh, take it and um, modulate it to a different carrier frequency which will then be sent um, over the air simultaneously with all the other subcarriers. So uh, let's first start off with um, revisiting rectangular MRE QAM which we saw several lectures ago. So D bits are taken from an input stream, um, uh, bit stream uh, DM, okay? And what we do is we use to se select one of the 2D combinations of amplitudes for two carriers, A and B. So this will be our in-phase and quadrature amplitude values. Okay, so we take D bits, we, we, we then uh, split the representation between the in-phase and the quadrature representation such that at the end, our uh, QAM signal is equal to um, a n cos omega k n plus b n sine omega k n. And so what these guys are, this a n and b n guys, these are piecewise constant signals. That means that even though they're discrete, um, they occur over n time samples, okay, time instances, the same value. So it's almost like step functions. And omega k is equal to 2 pi k over 2 n. And this is our carrier frequency from a discrete time perspective. And our symbol period is 2n. So how do we implement this, um, uh, 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 the, uh, the, this sort of mathematics uh, in a communication system? So uh, let's, I'm going to draw it out and, and show you how this can be all uh, represented. OK. So how does our rectangular QAM modulator look like? Well, first of all, suppose we have the signal dm. OK. And we feed it through a demultiplexer. So it either chooses between one of two possible ports. And that's how we're going to create our in-phase and quadrature components. So that's going to be A of L. And that's going to be B of L. We then up, up, up sample by 2N. And then what we do is we do a little trick. We feed this through a filter that has the following impulse response. It essentially is a rectangular pulse. It, uh, so we have a unit step function, n minus u, n minus 2n. So it essentially will look like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, da, 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 and then back to 0. And they're going to be 2n of these guys. And the reason why we're doing that is what happens when you feed 
in this case, this guy is going to here look like essentially a single delta and a lot, a lot, a lot, uh, basically two n minus one zeros until the next sample. So it's almost like a delta. And so when we feed that into a filter with this type of impulse response or that type of impulse response, we flush out essentially these strings of deltas and unit steps, each one with amplitudes AL and BL. Then what we do is we take that signal, the resulting signal, which we call A prime of N and B prime of N, convolve it with cosine omega kn and sine omega kn, so that keeps the orthogonality. And then once we have that, we sum it together. And, and that's our composite output signal S sub n. So now given this transmitter design, we need to now figure out how to implement a receiver that can successfully decode um, the modulated signal. So now let's let's see how to implement that 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 receiver. Likewise, our receiver will look like this. It will essentially get R of n, and we first of all demodulate the signals with cosine omega k n and sine omega k n. And what we then do is again, feed that through these unit step functions that make the rectangular pulses. So u of n minus u, u sorry, u of n minus two n. Same thing here. So the impulse is basically rectangular wave. And then what we do is we downsample by a factor of 2n. And so when we do that, what we end up getting is a hat l and b hat l, the reconstructed version of those two guys. And then we make a decision as to who they are, because the receiver knows what are all the possible AL and BL values. So we have a decision-making rule, and lo and behold, we, we get the corresponding reconstructed message D of M. Okay, so we now have some diagrams of how the transmitter receiver from a multi-rate perspective using just filtering and resampling and interpolators and, and the like can be put together in order to implement a single carrier uh, QAM transmitter and receiver. How does the mathematics look like? Well, it's a little messy. So the next couple of slides uh, give us sort of the demodulated uh, version of these rectangular MRA QAM signals um, uh, after we filter them. And, and, and I won't go into too much detail with the mathematics, except to see that um, uh, with a lot of the convolutions and multiplications that we're doing, we're going to have qu quite a few in, 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 um, uh, trigonometric identities that we need to pull out in order to get the end result, which is a reconstructed A value from, from the original A values. And uh, similarly, um, th th so that's the in-phase cont contribution as well as the quadrature contribution, the B values themselves. Okay. So now... Um, with, with all of this, how do we implement um, a multi-carrier uh, version of this, uh, of, of this um, type of multi-rate implementation? Um, and the answer is we just uh, create parallel instances of these single carrier um, designs and then somehow multiplex them or add them together to the output and transmit over the air. But we have to take a careful note of which frequency we're using for each one of these uh, branches. So, so I'm going to draw that now and, and, and show how you can create a multi-carrier uh, version of all these um, uh, single carrier um, uh, transceivers um, by summing them all together. So to create a multi-carrier implementation of what we've just seen, so let's say we take the QAM uh, modulator, okay? What you would essentially have is you would have, like, let's say, your, D, um, your, your D1 of M, 
you would have your d2 of m. And these can be originated from, um, from uh, say, um, an even higher data rate source, and these are just the multiplex versions. What ends up happening is we go, we go through the same process. Remember, it goes through a DMUX, so we get an I and a Q, right? So and now we get our I and Qs, so we'll write the AL and BLs. Um, we do the up sampling by factor 2n. And we do that for all of them. And then what happens is that impulse response that I was telling you about, remember the rectangular pulse? And then the big difference between single carrier and multi carrier is the choice of omega k's. Remember, we, ha we multiply here by uh, cos omega k. So let's say we call it omega 1 of n and sine omega 1 of n. And same thing here, we modulate. So we're basically moving these, we're going to move these to different frequencies. So omega 1 and omega 2 of n are going to be very, very, very different in order to ensure that the two don't overlap in frequency. Otherwise, we'll never be able to recover them, or at least not recover them easily anyway. So once we have those signals, they're summed together to create our composite signal, our QAM signal. And then these guys, are added together along with those from subsequent branches. And that's how you create a multi-carrier waveform using a bunch of QAM modulators. And the demodulators and the QAM uh, and multi-carrier demodulator is pretty much the same thing. Okay. So as we've just seen, I've we've taken a single carrier implementation. Um, uh, that's mul that's a multi-rate implementation of, um, in this case, a QAM uh, transmitter and receiver. We've then created a parallel realization of multiple QAM transmitters and receivers and created a sort of a composite waveform that essentially um, modulating each branch at a different frequency, uh, we sum the output together and that creates our multi-carrier signal. Now, what happens is there's something called orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or OFDM, which is a very efficient type of multi-carrier modulator. And there was a paper in the uh, IEEE Transactions on Communications by Weinstein and Ebert that showed that you can use discrete Fourier transforms and in inverse discrete Fourier transforms, uh, DFTs and IDFTs, in order to modulate and demodulate these data streams in a way that is so much more computationally efficient relative to doing sort of this brute force multi-rate approach that we've just reviewed. So in many ways, um, when, when uh, Weinstein and Ebert came up with this approach, um, it took a while, but now with computing technology the way it is, and given that we now have computationally efficient versions of DFTs and IDFTs called fast Fourier transforms, we can make OFDM transceivers um, really efficient, really cheap, using a lot of off-the-shelf components. And uh, that's what really helped the use of, uh, of, of, of incorporating multi-carrier modulation in a lot of today's commercial wireless products.